Josh James is a hardcore hunter from the backwards of New Zealand. I reckon my favourite weapon would have to be the longbow. There's heaps deep if you know how to get it. Matt Tebbett is a British chef who loves foraging for wild food. Wild ingredients are everything to me. Now the hunter and the chef have come together with one aim to survive in the wildest places on Earth. That's amazing. Well done, man. And prove they can still eat like kings. Oh, no. They'll forage and hunt for everything they need to stay alive. Wow, look at that. And to really test themselves, they're taking only basic kit. This is about me putting my wits against nature. Damn it. Now here, God, you appreciate it. Every mouthful. <laughs> What was the name of your restaurant? We made it! Kusimo, Northern Finland. This frozen wilderness lies just below the Arctic Circle. For the next seven days, Chef Matt Tebbett and hunter Joss James will be surviving on their own in this harsh environment, determined to make great food out of what nature has to offer. The reason we've come to this bitterly cold, bleak environment is to prove to myself that I can hunt and gather anywhere on Earth, and what better place to do it than an Arctic wasteland. Everything about this place is gonna be off the scale. It's gonna be extreme foraging, extreme hunting, and even extreme eating. And I'm really hoping we haven't bitten off more than we can chew. To cook, Matt only has a pot and knives. Josh has a bow and arrow, knife, and basic fishing kit. But in these sub-zero temperatures, they also need a few life-saving essentials. Brought along an ax, so it might be handy. Got a shovel and a pretty heavy duty sleeping bag because it's going to get cold, but that's it. Matt and Josh have hitched a ride to a high point deep in this frozen wasteland. This is stop point. <laughs> Thanks, bro. You sure in the right spot? They won't be picked up again for a week. See you later, man. See you. Might be an over our heads here, mate. Mid-morning, and it's just two degrees Celsius. It's getting pretty windy now. It's snowing, it's windy, it's raining. We're very exposed up here, aren't we? It's really cold. What do we need to do? We need to get off this hill, build a shelter, yeah. uh, light a fire. Okay. I reckon we want to go to the lake. There'll be fish in there. Is that the lake? Yeah, I reckon it's a lake. It's lake shaped. Okay, sound good. Sound good. They have no map or compass, but Josh believes there may be a lake beneath the snow in a distant clearing. Oh. This is pretty, pretty hard going. I mean, it's hard underfoot. Very, very difficult terrain. This is looking fairly bleak. Haven't seen any animal trails yet. Hopefully when we get down to the valley floor, there'll be a bit more animal sign. Although it's winter, expert forager Matt could find wild berries under the snow. And even pine bark is edible. For hunter Josh, there are mammals like beaver and muskrats. Underneath the ice in the frozen lakes, there are also freshwater fish. Slow, isn't it, this progress? It is. Precarious. My hands are freezing. Josh has spotted a clearing in the trees he thinks is a lake, but there are also swamps hidden beneath the snow among the pine forests. Oh, oh, oh yeah? <clears throat> Bloody hell. <coughs> it's get, definitely getting harder to walk in it when it, once it tightens up. Trekking oh. in deep snow burns twice as much energy as walking on dry land. Oh, it's gross. 
<laughs> oh my god. I think instead of just pushing on, mate, we've got to make some snowshoes. This is ridiculous. So I've just tied these four bits together at the top. I'm going to tie these together at the bottom. And then those pieces are going to go across there and across there for us to stand on. Okay. Once they're tied on, I'll pull these together at the bottom so they'll be shaped like this. And go well, what is the idea of that they spread your left. weight? Uh, that they evenly disperse your weight over the snow and you won't sink. Oh my God. You're right, bro. No, I think we should just maybe stay here and die. Sounds like you need a big cup of harden up. A bit hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're on to a winner right there. This snowshoe design has been used for centuries by the indigenous reindeer herders of this area. <laughs> you make that look incredibly difficult. It, well, it's a bit alien. <laughs> oh, this is great. They're good, aren't they? Lifted by spirits, that. Starting to open up a bit. Look at that, look ahead. That's a beautiful sight. Josh's bushcraft experience tells him this treeless clearing could hide a frozen lake. It does look kind of like a lake. Where I'm from, lakes don't have trees growing out of them. Oh, yeah. Might be time for you to get your shovel out and start digging. I'm hoping is what we've been waiting to find. And if it is our lake, potentially we've got fish. Hang on. Do you know what? What? Well, I think it might be yeah. it, huh? Come and have a look. Smells a bit. Smells of swamp. It smells like a dirty pond. This is a lake that water will be clean. No lake. We've hit swamp. They're crying out loud. Are you saying it's, a, it's kind of like marshland? I reckon this is marshland, and I reckon that's what you've struck. This dirty swamp won't have any fish. You having a good day, Matt? Well, I was. It was quite funny earlier, and now it's got cold. And we don't have shelter, we don't have feed. So it's gone from being quite a laugh to being a bit crap. I concur, it's a bit crap at the moment. This is the last push, yeah? Josh knows there are tree clearings that could hide frozen lakes. Glaciers that once covered Finland left nearly 200,000 lakes within its borders. He needs to find another clearing in the snow. These shoes have started, started to lose their fun. Look ahead, bro. <laughs> I can see water over there. Oh, yeah. yeah. That for sure is a lake. Isn't that lovely? It's beautiful, isn't it? The shoreline on the frozen lake will make an ideal campsite. Right. This tree, I reckon that's our campsite right here. Look at that. Night temperatures drop to minus 30 degrees. Cold enough to kill. Josh strips the lower half of a spruce to build a tree pit camp. This is great. I reckon we'll be able to build a pretty sweet shelter right here. At the base of the trunk, Matt is digging a hollow to protect against the elements. Thank God we brought the shovel and the axe. Without those, this would be 10 times as hard. Josh collects spruce branches to provide ground insulation. Home sweet home. There's a lot of fire. Eh? Yep. A local moss called Old Man's Beard makes great tinder. I'm going to grab a whole bunch now because it's a really good idea 
if you see a resource, to grab a whole bunch of it while you can. We've got our tinder for the rest of the week, pretty much. With no lighter or matches, Josh is using a traditional flint and steel. And also, I had some char cloth. Now, char cloth is essentially cotton and it will hold a spark. I'm going to strike the flint and that's going to drop a spark onto the char cloth. I'll transfer the char cloth onto my little ball of tinder and then I'm going to blow on it. Sweet. All right, we're away. My hands are so cold. Oh my God, that feels amazing. It makes so much difference, that fire. After the long, hard trek, it's vital they replace lost fluids fast. Even in the snow, dehydration kills. So why can't we just eat snow? The problem with that is it's so cold when you start eating it, it lowers your core temperature of your body and you right. just start getting colder and colder and colder. So instead of rehydrating yourself, all of that water from the mountain snow is going to try to heat your body up. It's just a vicious downward spiral. And All right. okay. You end up getting cold, colder and colder, and then hypothermia sets in. It's one of the worst things you can do. Matt and Josh have shelter, fire and water, but they are a long way from their ultimate goal. We still don't have any food. Um, we're kind of both running on reserve. And we've just found our way to this lake, which looks amazing as you can see. Um, however, as beautiful as this place is, uh, and as excited as I am to be here, it can turn pretty bloody brutal very, very quickly. Um, and I think that's probably going to be the theme of the week. In the remote frozen wastes of northern Finland, Kiwi hunter Josh James and British chef Matt Tebbett are two days into their mission to catch and cook the best food they can in one of the wildest places on earth. It was quite a pleasant evening, apart from Matt's incessant snoring. Slightly peckish. I'm pretty hungry, actually. <laughs> in the sub-Arctic cold, Matt and Josh will burn twice as much energy as normal just to stay warm they urgently need calories. Right, we need some food. I know there's lots and lots of berries out here, so at least that's something. So you going fishing? Yeah, I've been thinking about how to get through the ice. I'm going to use my bowie knife, I think, and make an ice chisel and chisel my way through to the fish. OK. After 24 hours with no food, Matt and Josh's energy levels are low. They both set off in search of a meal. Even here, Josh has a clever trick for finding fishing bait. Oh, here we go. I found a tree here. You can see some fresh sawdust. What that fresh sawdust tells me is that there's currently grubs in there boring into this tree. So if I chop this tree up, there's a very good chance I'm going to find grubs. Bingo. That's good. We now have a bait source. So as long as there's fish in that lake, we will catch fish. There's another one. Beauty, all right, I think that'll do us. So this is a uh, this is a first for me. I've never actually done any foraging with a little shovel and an axe. Forager Matt scouts the lake shoreline in search of berries. Long, barren winters make them the main diet of the indigenous people. There's a whole kind of array of berries in this region. Cloudberries, crowberries, lingonberries. They'll be bloody invaluable right now because we've had no food. This is that wild juniper though. Wow, that is unmistakably juniper. Now out here they smoke this with fish. Now what we could do is find some little berries. These bushes fruit in autumn. If there are still berries when the winter snow falls, they are frozen on the bush. By being frozen, also, it preserves the integrity of the berry, so all the goodness is still there. There's 
no signs of any berries here. This is so frustrating. It's all been stripped long before the snow arrived. Josh selects a piece of wood to make a drill to get through the ice. Perfect. Here we go. One ice chiseling stick. Never had to make an ice chisel before. This is definitely a first for me. I'm thinking what we need to do is get out in the lake, knock a hole in the ice, and drop a fishing line through. How can it be? The ice on the lake is almost 40 centimetres thick, easily enough to carry Josh's weight. The water beneath is up to 14 metres deep. We have gone two days without eating anything. We kind of need to catch today because if we don't, we're screwed. Josh's small grub bait should attract schools of perch. It was a lovely day to be out fishing. I wasn't ready to eat my own leg. Fishing when you're really hungry isn't that much fun. That didn't go quite to plan. It's turned out to be a lot damn harder than I ever anticipated. Matt is forced to revert to plan B in his search for a meal. Okay, so this is what I'm looking for. This is a regular Scots pine, but here is essentially a source of food. This is proper famine food. We're gonna take it, strip it down to the bark, and then I'm gonna dry it out and use it and turn it into a porridge. For centuries, the indigenous people of northern Finland have turned to pine bark after bad harvests. I'm not sure what Josh is going to say. I don't think he's going to be too excited about the prospect of eating bark. Bark is an excellent source of fibre and minerals. A handful could also provide around 300 calories. Oh, and that is dinner. Oh. Been sitting out here for more than two and a half, three hours now. Perch are a schooling fish, so if there's one perch there, there's more. Feast or famine when it comes to perch, and I'm a little bit worried we may not be feasting today. Baited lines left overnight give the best chance of catching fish. Okay, now what I've got to do is uh, stuff some branches in there to stop that freezing up. So far, all attempts to catch food have been unsuccessful. No fish. But expert chef Matt sets about making a meal from his foraged bark. It's a filler. It's not supposed to be tasty. It's going to fill us up. It's full of magnesium, iron and zinc. I thought it was full of bark. What we're eating steeped in tradition and history. These are proper famine foods, though. But we're kind of at that stage, aren't we? I mean, there's goodness in there, a bit. Matt will rehydrate the dried bark, boiling it into porridge to break down the fibres. So what are we going to do if you don't get any fish? Are we really going to eat this for the next four days? Yup. <laughs> it better be bloody good. Horrific. My advice to you is don't open a wild food restaurant. <laughs> I've never eaten tree. Not likely to again. This could be us this afternoon, tomorrow, the next day, and the day after. After two days in this frozen wilderness, Matt and Josh's dream of catching and cooking great food has eluded them. At the moment, this is all about sort of basic survival uh, and nothing about sort of living well which is the whole point of me being here. The plan that I had when I arrived here has taken a very different course. 
and one that isn't particularly inviting right now. This is our house. It's pretty cosy. This is our bed right here. There's the um, the lounge right there, leading onto the kitchen over there. Tool shed there, and uh, out here is the that's the garden and uh, the butchers, which is around the corner. We actually haven't been able to find the butchers yet, which has been quite frustrating. We know there's butchers out there somewhere. We just haven't been able to find it. In northern Finland, Kiwi hunter Josh and British chef Matt are attempting to live off the land in a subarctic wilderness. No fish. So far, they've caught nothing. The face of dejection. And Matt's plan of foraging buried fruit has also failed. Nothing. Halfway through the week, and they are struggling to survive. What is it, day four? Day four, and to say I'm disappointed would be an understatement. We've had bark, hot water. All right, I'm gonna have a cup of tea first anyway. Uh, time for some pine needle tea. I'm starting to get bloody cramps. Leg cramps, rib cramps, stomach cramps. So that's a uh, vitamin deficiency. Quite as good as chamomile, is it? So do you want to check the lines, or shall I? Maybe you should. There might be a fish on him. Right, I won't be long. Josh left baited lines in the water overnight. It's not too frozen. No fish in the hole, and uh, no bait. So fish has eaten my bait. Missing bait at least proves there are fish in the lake. And by hook or by crook, we need to catch some fish. Nope, oh, all right, bites. Oh, I might have just caught the smallest fish in the lake. Is a perch, a very small perch. But uh, a perch nonetheless. Quite a handsome little fella. Perch feed in schools. Where there's one, there could be more. Oh, got another one here. We seem to be on the right spot. They're not very big. I don't think we're going to be feasting tonight. Another small perch. Jesus, don't want to lose him. Okay, well I'm starting to get fairly cold and uh, I'm really, really hungry. Josh sets more overnight fishing lines. We'll eat the bigger fish and the smaller ones I'll put on bigger hooks and hopefully we'll catch some bigger fish with the smaller fish. After three days, Josh and Matt have burned through over 10,000 calories each. The perch provides just 1,000 between them. How'd you go? Perch. All right. Jesus, I've never seen fish this small. I know, they're tiny, eh? We're going to have to eat all of the damn fish. Matt uses his foraged juniper leaves to add flavour. Jesus. Cold hands. Freezing. Stand up, jump oh. up and down and go like this. That's why? At the same time. No, because it's make me look stupid. No, 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 it'll increase your circulation. Go like this. Why? Try it. <laughs> Try it. It increases your circulation. Don't believe this is doing anything other than making me look no. stupid. Come on. <sighs> Working? They're coming back. I'll tell you what, why don't you cook the fish? And then worry about your hair. That's <laughs> <laughs> basically. <laughs> Matt improvises a frying pan. I think I might put a little bit of snow in there, and then that's going to melt and just steam them. These little fish aren't going to take long to cook at all. Right, 
Right, you ready? The top points for presentation there, Chief. Yeah, thanks. Oh, that's really good. Mm, it's so good. If we had 20 of these suckers, we'd be halfway to OK, wouldn't we? Mm. OK, re-energised. Let's have another push. Maybe I'll go for a wee mission around the outside and see if there's any animal sign. So how long are you going to stay out for? As long as it takes, mate. At the end of the long sub-Arctic winter, many animals are still hibernating. Hunter Josh's best bet are beavers, which are common here and don't hibernate. In search of a beaver dam, he tracks a creek north of the frozen lake. Traditionally, beaver were hunted for fur, but the dark fatty meat is also packed with iron and up to 20,000 calories. So we've come to the beaver's dam. I can hear where the water's rushing through it, so it's just down there. And we can see where the beaver lodges. I reckon what we're gonna do is see if we can pull a log out of his dam to make the water level drop. Beavers dam rivers, creating a wetland around their lodges to protect against predators. Josh will breach the dam, lowering the lodge's water levels and coaxing the beaver out to repair the damage. Mr. he'll sense that water level dropping and he'll come down to see what's going on. Maybe try to fix this hole in the dam and then we'll pin him. That's the plan anyway. All right, that's one hole. Fingers crossed I'll be able to nail me a beaver before the sun gets too low and get back to camp tonight. With the dam breached, it's now a waiting game. Having no luck foraging on the northern shore, Matt heads to the southern edge of the lake in search of frozen berries. That, that's a crowberry. They're a real kind of treasure, really. And this is kind of what I had in mind when we came here. Carpets of berries. And look, we've even got lingonberries. This is fantastic. Lingonberries and crowberries are central to the diets of the indigenous people who use them to make sauces for smoked meat. Packed with natural sugars, they're a welcome find for Chef Matt. This, this is something else. So this, but up here, this is reindeer moss. The reindeer moss is, in fact, a type of lichen. It's a good source of carbohydrate. Suddenly, I've got something to eat. Your spirits are lifted. <sighs> come on, where's this bloody beaver? The sun's in now. If he's gonna come out, he's gotta come out pretty damn soon. There's it. You got it. I thought I saw him then, but I didn't. If I don't get a beaver tonight, this trip could be a complete and utter washout. With his haul of berries and moss, Matt stumbles on a potential source of protein. So here is a food source. It's not one I relish, to be honest. It's wood ants. They're edible and it's gonna be good source of protein and this is more becoming about survival than it is foraging for great food so let's go and have a look mm. wow it's like lemon it's like squeezing citrus in the mouth it's not unpleasant after four days of not eating much at all this is a bloody feast And um, 
lobe either. We, I don't know if they smelt us earlier on because the wind was blowing upstream before we came across a dam. I'm really tired. We're now entering our fourth night on this expedition. And we've had more to eat. Wonder how Matt's getting on back at camp. I guarantee that fire's gonna go out and Matt is gonna really struggle to light a fire tonight. Huh. No Josh. I've got no fire. My hands are freezing. And I'm really rubbish at lighting fires. Temperatures here drop to minus 30 degrees Celsius. Without a fire, the cold can be fatal. But novice Matt has never lit a fire with flint and steel. Got it. <laughs> oh, look at that, look at that. How easy is lighting a fire? Very easy is the answer. There's no sign of Josh and I'm hungry. I've got food, I've got fire. I don't actually need Josh. If he comes back in time, he can have some. If he doesn't, I'll save him some. Chef Matt improvises a meal of fried reindeer moss, ants and crowberries. This has got to be one up from that bark porridge. You know what? That's all right. Well, for the first time this week, I'm actually really happy about where we're at. Berries, reindeer moss, and ants. Who would have thought it? Not me. After six hours, there is no sign of the elusive quarry. I don't know if I've even got enough energy to walk back to camp. It's going to be an extremely long journey. I'm not going to be able to make it back. The camp is too far. He will have to overnight in a temporary shelter. So this is my um, my little nest here. I've got enough spruce branches under there to keep me insulated from the ground. They're enough to keep me uh, warm from the top. Now, I'll show you that the most important part of this whole operation is the trench I've done, dug to, um, to spill the cold air out so cold air does not pull on me. That trench goes all the way into my little nest and the cold air is just going to keep dropping out that. That's really important to do if you're building one of these shelters. Otherwise, the cold air is just going to go drop into that shelter and you're going to freeze your ass off. So, there it is. I'm going to um, turn the camera off now and go to bed because I'm absolutely <sighs> Tell you. Having failed to flush out the beaver, Josh needs to rethink his strategy. I've got to walk all the way back to camp. Right, there he goes. Certainly not glamour camping. <sighs> Pretty disappointed that I don't have beaver. What Where were happen? you? So I was dry. worried about you. I, on the other hand, was not worried about you one little bit. Look at this, fire. <laughs> I seat. can't believe it. Have a seat. Holy <laughs> you've got food. You found berries. I found some berries. They're amazing. Where'd you go? How far did you get? Found a beaver dam. Yeah? I didn't see any beavers. Nothing. So what's the plan today then? I've been thinking about this beaver. Yeah. I reckon with two of us, we'll be able to really get in there and manipulate some of those bigger logs. Then we can stick them with an arrow and come back to camp and uh, we can spit roast the beaver. Josh decides to take a shortcut to the dam by crossing the creek. Right, we need to find somewhere to cross here. Can we not walk, just walk around it? The problem is this creek goes in the big year all the way around there. And how are we going to get across? Probably drop a tree across it, I reckon. There's a narrow point there. The log footbridge over the creek must be secure. There you go, there's that tree right there. The water below is close to freezing.
You've done it now. In the sub-Arctic wilderness, Kiwi hunter Josh and British chef Matt are on their way to hunt beaver. But Matt is in trouble. You've done it now. Matt needs to get out of the freezing river and dry off. In this water, his body will cool 25 times faster than when dry. <laughs> get out of there, come on. Within 15 minutes, he'll be hypothermic and unconscious if he doesn't dry off. <coughs> no. Are you soaked? Is you, are, you beat, are your feet wet? <coughs> All right. This could potentially be a bit of a worry. <coughs> Try to get all, all the wheels. As Matt's body temperature plummets, his heart and breathing rates drop. <coughs> Lie down in the snow. Why? That's ridiculous. Lie down in the snow, Matt. <laughs> We're going to soak the snow out of your pants. Lie down. The snow will absorb the freezing water from Matt's clothes. Put your jacket back on here. Going to provide a wind barrier for you, so put that back on. Uh. Soon kick. Uh. Zip it up. All right, now start just walking around, stomping around. Oh, Jesus, my feet, the legs are frozen. It's so cold. So cold it takes your breath away. Matt urgently needs to dry his clothes and take in warm liquid to raise his core temperature. The beaver hunt is abandoned. Let's boot it back to camp, eh? <coughs> right, let's go, bro. <coughs> Come on, sunshine. You can do it. I'm not even hungry anymore. All right, take your boots off. Can you undo your boot laces? I'll get this fire going. <laughs> what you want to do now is get all of your wet clothes off and jump straight into your sleeping bag. Oh my God. Why are my toes burning up? Ah, uh, because you've got circulation coming back into them. That's good. Hot drink, one of the best things for warming it back up because it warms you up from the inside. There you are, sir. Don't spill it. <sighs> you don't need a hug, do you? <laughs> Is that supposed to motivate me to get up? Well, this is fun, isn't it? No. Sorry about the beaver. It happens. What a day. Can I say on camera? I hope so, because it was a day. Waking up in my hole in the ice and having to walk all the way back with no beaver. It'd be nice if we did have some food tomorrow. I'm absolutely wiped out. That river just knocked the life out of me. I feel terrible. <laughs> I've got a banging headache. Um, and I just feel like sleeping for the next week. Jesus, where's my bow? I could have had one of those. Swan. Mate, we could have had roast swan. You can't Look shoot those in Britain. We're yeah. not in England now, are we? No. Uh, oh, I want to get home now. <sighs> Another day in paradise. Overnight, Matt's clothes have dried, but he's still in bad shape. <coughs> Matt and Josh are a long way from their goal of living like kings in the wild. Time to check if the fishing lines have worked. Oh, we've got one on this one. Really? How far down is it? I don't know, don't put your hands down there, they've got big teeth. Oh. Gee! Oh my God, he's beautiful. We got food, man. And he's fat. I'm Ooh. thinking this is a pike. That's what a pike's mouth looks like. It looks so. like a pike to me. So look at the colour of those gills. The redder the gill, the fresher the fish. You could never buy one as fresh as that. All right, 
Let's go cook them. The northern pike of Finland has firm, sweet flesh. Oh. What I want to do is open him up and split him down the middle. I'm going to keep... Ooh, that's how fresh that is. <laughs> Obviously, that's just nerves. So, what I'm going to do is plank cook him. We've got the local fish. It'd be quite nice to employ a bit of sort of local cooking into this. The traditional technique of plank grilling will impart a wood flavour to the fish and help retain its natural juices. Josh selects the aromatic birch for the plank. So I'm going to finish this uh, fish off on the plank with some sprigs of juniper, and then I've got these lingam berries, and they've got the most beautiful taste. So I'm going to make a little kind of compote out of that, kind of fruity and sort of zesty, really, to go with the fish. What I've got is a little improvised pastry brush. Hopefully, some of that flavour is going to be pulled into the fish, and then when it's nailed to the board with a bit of juniper, this could be bloody lovely. Ah, uh, yeah, it's good, mate. Have Shall I you... whittle you up a few pigs? That would be great. And this is a juniper. The pike has to be fixed in place with pegs, as it'll be cooked vertically. You reckon? Yeah, turf it on. Right. Oh, it looks bloody good. The plank conducts heat, cooking the underside of the pike, while the open fire grills the rest. You want to eat? Come on, mate. That does look delicious. Look at that. Mm. That's so good. It's good, isn't it? It's really, really meaty. It's really good, isn't it? It's a really good fish. You can taste that juniper. It's bloody it's delicious. delicious. I'm happy now. Mate, you're an incorrigible chap, aren't you? <laughs> well done, Matthew. Would you come somewhere as tough as this again? Yep, I would. We can make it here, bro. We can make it anywhere. That's New York. <laughs> <laughs> we did do well to survive it here. I, for a moment there, I thought it was going to get the better of us, and yeah. we may end up starving. But turns out, managed to catch a fish or two. So out of ten, nearly a nine. I'm happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've absolutely made it here. In a very short space of time, going from not much at all to, to something quite amazing. That fish was delicious. I'm stoked, to be honest. Right, okay, you ready? Let's go. All right. What a week. What an extremely challenging, cold, snowy, Entertaining week. Hey boys. Cheers, bro. I've never been anywhere as tough as this, but we grabbed it by the neck and we made it.